live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. November 19th, 1977. It's another installment of the game. Arguably the greatest rivalry in all of college football, and maybe even all of college and American sports, as the Ohio State Buckeyes are traveling to Ann Arbor, Michigan, to take on the Michigan Wolverines. This was one of the biggest games in the storied history of the rivalry, as both teams were having incredibly successful seasons, with Michigan entering the game with a 9-1 record overall and a 6-1 record in Big Ten play, and Ohio State entering with a 9-1 record and a 7-0 record in conference play. Both of these teams were ranked inside the top five, and the stakes were incredibly simple. The winner of this game wins the Big Ten, gets to represent the conference and the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, and even gets to keep their national championship hopes alive. Everything and then some was riding on this game. And what we got was another close and legendary installment in the rivalry that still lives on 45 years later. Because when all was said and done, Michigan won the game by a final score of 14-6, taking the Big Ten and the conference's spot in the Rose Bowl for the third straight season. The game was notable for a variety of reasons, from the fact that Michigan seemingly got dominated and still won, losing the first down battle 23-10 and the yardage battle 350-196, to the fact that a crowd of 106,024 fans attended at Michigan Stadium, making it the largest crowd at the time in college football history, to the fact that during the game, Ohio State head coach Woody Hayes infamously knocked down an ABC cameraman in frustration, which would definitely not be the last time that Hayes got into some trouble with a third party on the sideline. It's a game that is still remembered today by Michigan fans as one of the best wins in the history of the rivalry. But we're not here to necessarily talk about what happened on the field. Rather, we're here to talk about what happened off of it with regards to the broadcast and something that happened halfway around the world. In this battle between two teams ranked inside the top five, the country was eagerly anticipating being able to see all 60 minutes of action. Instead, they only saw about 53 minutes, as the entire country missed the first seven minutes of the game. Unless you were inside Michigan Stadium that day, and unless you were one of the 106,000 or so fans that were in the bleachers, you had no idea what was happening. Because ABC, which had the rights to broadcast the game, missed the first seven minutes of action. And to say that people were furious about this would be an understatement. Because if you remember watching this 1977 game as it happened, odds are you remember this incident. Because this is the story behind one of the craziest broadcasting controversies in the history of the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry. Before I talk about the actual controversy in question and the backlash that came from it, we need some context to understand what was happening in the news on that day. And to do this, we're going to go halfway across the world to the Middle East, where we need to talk about the conflict between Israel and Egypt. Now I'm not going to dive too much into the weeds of this, because there's way too much to talk about and I would be here all day if I tried to get through every detail of this conflict. However, this conflict halfway around the world plays a critical part in our story in this game between Ohio State and Michigan. Long story short, after years and years of conflict between the two nations, dating all the way back to the 1940s, by this point in 1977, it seemed as though the two sides were ready to begin peace talks. At this point, no Arab leader had ever visited Israel. However, Egyptian President Anwar Sadat was ready to step foot in Israel and begin to figure out a way to end the conflict. The decision by Sadat to do this was not without controversy, as not only did Syria, Iraq, and Libya officials oppose this, but people within Egypt opposed the trip. However, despite the vocal opposition by some, this 36-hour visit was considered a historic moment for the world. And with such a monumental moment taking place that impacted America greatly, partly because President Jimmy Carter 
made it one of its missions to promote peace throughout the Middle East, television networks were trying to figure out how they were going to cover this occasion with regards to what they would show, and what original programming they would preempt to air Sadat's visit. Each of the big three networks was going to cover the news, but each network had a very different way of doing it. NBC seemed as though they had no plan at all, announcing that they were uncertain of what exactly they were going to be showing and at what times, which was odd, seeing as this was a pretty structured visit. CBS said that they were going to televise Sadat's arrival into Israel live on Saturday, and they would carry the entirety of his speech on Sunday. And then there was ABC, who said that they would not only air specials at different points throughout the weekend, but they would air the arrival for one hour on Saturday and the speech for two hours on Sunday. However, while Sadat was trying to restore peace in the Middle East and ease the tensions between Egypt and Israel, he failed to take one key thing into account. He was going to be doing this on the same day as the game between Ohio State and Michigan. And ABC had a decision to make when it came to what they wanted to do seeing as the Ohio State-Michigan game started at 1 o'clock Eastern, and Sadat's arrival was happening at 12 o'clock Eastern. At this point, they canned all of their pregame coverage for the game. They would cut in briefly three times during Sadat's visit, but the actual pregame show leading up to the game? That was going to be scrapped. Sadat's visit took priority. The plan for ABC, even though they had to cut the pregame show, was to show the Michigan-Ohio State game after Sadat's visit, just going straight into coverage from Israel to coverage from Michigan. Having said that, ABC fully acknowledged that there was a possibility that the visit would run long. Live events don't exactly stay on a rigid schedule, especially one of this magnitude, and there was the chance that 1 o'clock Eastern would hit, and Sadat would still be in the middle of his historic visit at which point, ABC would have a decision to make, and they would have to make the call. And I'm sure you can see where this one is going. Because when 1 o'clock hit on the East Coast, guess who was still in the middle of his arrival in Israel? That's right, Anwar Sadat. Now, there are quite a few reasons why you would think that ABC would flip to Michigan-Ohio State. Number one, they were literally going to rebroadcast Sadat's arrival later that night at 7 o'clock so this would not be the only opportunity that people would get to witness this historic event. Compare that to Michigan-Ohio State, where it only airs once, and that's it, and just from the scarcity principle, the edge goes to the game. Number two, just in terms of action and what was happening, Sadat wasn't in the middle of a speech or was planned to do anything else. He was just arriving, and the shots that you saw from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock are practically identical to the shots you would see for the remainder of the broadcast. It would be different if he was in the middle of talking, since you can't really interrupt that. But this was just him arriving. Depending on how you want to look at it, the moment either already happened, or was really going to happen on Sunday. It's almost like the equivalent of a pregame show, or a postgame show. Number three, there's always the element of proximity, that as humans, we tend to care about things, no matter how important or how insignificant that they may seem, that are closer to us than things that are further away. If there's a child in your school district, even if you might not know them, that is having trouble affording school lunch and is malnourished, you care more about that than the kid in Africa halfway around the world who's struggling to get clean drinking water. Obviously, that is just an example and in no way whatsoever am I comparing world hunger to a football game. But you get the idea. Things that are closer to home, especially if it's an event that we look forward to for a while, are valued at higher importance than events that are nowhere close to home. And many people around the country love college football, and grew up as fans or alums of Michigan or Ohio State. Compare that to the percentage of people who know about the intricacies of the Egypt-Israeli crisis, and it's like night and day. And number four, we haven't even talked about what this meant from a ratings perspective. This game was fantastic counter-programming. Anyone who wanted to watch coverage of Sadat's visit would likely have turned on their network of preference, 
whether it be CBS, NBC, or ABC. Even if ABC stopped showing the event, if you cared about it that much, you could flip over to one of the other two networks, which had the exact same world feed. In other words, this is a business at the end of the day. And I'm not sure ABC was necessarily killing it in the ratings by airing a program that was identical to what the other networks were airing. Now, if you air Michigan, Ohio State, sure, you'll lose the small percentage of people who cared about Sadat's visit, and specifically, cared about his visit via your television network. But you'll gain literally everyone who cares about the game more. It's perfect counter-programming. It's the same reason why when the Super Bowl airs, networks don't counter-program with other sporting events. Instead, they counter-program with something completely different, where you can win an entirely new audience. But despite all of that, when 1 o'clock came, ABC made the decision to stay on the air with Sadat's visit, showing that over the start of the football game. Now, people had reactions to this. Do you think they reacted in a calm, level-headed manner, understanding that peace in the Middle East was more important than the start of a silly little football game, and they wholeheartedly agreed with ABC's call? Or do you think they lashed out and threw a fit? Take a wild guess. Of course they lashed out and threw a fit. What did you expect? You already took the pregame show away from them, and now you're taking away the first 10 minutes or so of the game? If we cared about Sadat so much, we would have turned on CBS or NBC and missed nothing. Now we have to miss the start of a top five battle to decide the Rose Bowl. And I'm not talking about one or two angry viewers who phoned in. I'm talking about thousands upon thousands of viewers flooding the ABC phone lines, flooding affiliate stations, and flooding the ABC headquarters in New York. Among the highlights of the outrage that ensued as a result of this, even though Channel 7, the ABC affiliate in Detroit, shut down its switchboard that Saturday, knowing that it was going to be bad, 125 callers still somehow managed to circumvent that and contact on-duty employees. One man said, I'm never going to watch your crappy station again. Another said that the decision was un-American and a disgrace with another saying that most people didn't even know who this Sadat fellow was. One of the funniest phone calls came from a man who denounced ABC, said that he was never going to watch that station again, and in the middle of his sentence said, Hell, the game's on. I gotta go. Way to stand your ground. For what it's worth, Rune Arledge, the president for ABC News and ABC Sports, never wavered in his decision and even when the network received complaints, was confident that he made the right call. Even if a television audience of 30 million people who watched the Michigan-Ohio State game right after might not agree. Michigan beating Ohio State to play for the Rose Bowl was a monumental achievement for the program, and there's a reason that the game is still talked about all these years later as a historic moment in the history of the rivalry. But for Michigan fans... Not all of them left their television sets happy on that day. Because even though they say that football is a 60-minute game, on this day in 1977, for anyone watching at a place outside Michigan Stadium, whether it was a bar or their house, it was a 50-minute game, give or take. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com. And be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.